Jason Harper was a popular math teacher and volleyball coach. His wife shot and killed him during an argument in their bedroom. Three children were watching cartoons. Julie Harper has been dating another man since killing her husband. That's completely false. I, um, I have many good friends. The person that they were referring to was someone that is a very dear, close friend of mine, but I was completely faithful to my husband during our entire marriage. She took his life and she dragged his reputation through the mud. Slamming me up against the wall, I said, stop, stop. What are you doing? Stop. And she says she documented everything in her diary. Sex, 11 p.m. Fight, 10 to 12 hours. I don't want to enable your horrible money ways and your poor credit score and everything else. I don't want to enable that. As he was coming toward me, he said, I'm going to kill you, you And Julie told us that he was dead. It's OK. Mommy's OK. Don't worry. How do you feel about your mom now? I don't like her. Why not? Because she killed my father. A forensic specialist went through everything Harper stashed inside this blue bag, from cash to pills to jewelry, even naked pictures of a man. After her husband's slaying, she stunned everyone when she showed up visibly pregnant, the result, she says, of in vitro fertilization. Well, I, I've said before that I don't know who the father is. Harper was acquitted last summer of first-degree murder. I believe that Julie was, again, bodily threatened with harm. This is her second trial now on second degree murder. I am innocent of any criminal wrongdoing. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about Julie Harper. Julie, well, the thing with Julie is you either believe her or you don't. And there are people who believe her and there are people who don't. And there's evidence that makes Julie look really bad. And there's evidence that makes her husband look really bad. So I want to do what I usually do on my channel, which is I'm going to give you guys the facts. We'll discuss the theories and then you can decide for yourself. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare, my first ever sponsor. They came back. Can you believe it? Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are no ads like this one. Skillshare classes combine video lessons, class projects, and hands-on feedback. They have short lessons that fit your schedule. During the holidays, I love to bake. And so I found this really cool class. It's called mm -hmm. Cookie Decorating for Beginners. Create Incredible Edible Art. And it's by Lori Shannon, AKA icing artist, baker, and YouTuber. And she is so much fun. I love her classes. She gives you the skills to make pretty impressive cookie decorations that look like you really know what you're doing. Skillshare now offers subtitles on their entire catalog in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. The first 1,000 subscribers who click on the link below will get a one month free trial to try Skillshare and you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you guys so much for sitting through that and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's begin. So the whole thing started in the morning. It was August 7th, 2012, and it was in a gated community in Carlsbad, California. Inside this very nice house was a mess, literally and figuratively. Julie and Jason were upstairs in the master bedroom um, arguing, which is uh, what they usually do. And their three kids, Jake, Jackie, and Josh, were downstairs watching cartoons when they heard a loud thud. We heard a big thud, like really big. Jake and I went upstairs to ask Julie what happened. Then she opened the door very little. We could only see her. And she said, Daddy, you just fell off a chair. And he was going to rest and then go do some errands. And then we said, can we see him? And she said, no. Keep in mind, at this time, the kids' ages are eight, six, and one. The oldest boy, Jack, is eight, and the sister, Jackie, is six, and then the baby, Josh, was one. So it turns out that Julie had shot Jason in the heart. Quote, 
The bullet entered through the back of his left side and pierced his heart. He was 39 years old and a popular math teacher and volleyball coach at Carlsbad High School. After Julie shot Jason, she didn't call 911. Instead, she loaded up the kids in the car and she left. She left her husband to bleed to death, but she took his phone. From there, she goes to La Costa Coffee Roasting, which is like a hipster little coffee shop, a local coffee shop. And while she's there, she first uses her phone to message a neighbor and ask to set up a play date for the kids. And then she takes Jason's phone and she sends a text message from his phone to his brother. After Jason Harper was dead, somebody used his cell phone to text a message to his brother. And here's what that text message said. Running errands, Julie has the kids, see mom Friday. This message was sent at 11.46 a.m., which is hours after she shot Jason. She couldn't set up that play date, so she ends up dropping her two oldest kids at a play gym. From there, she kind of vanishes with the baby. We don't really know what she did during this time, but there are some theories but we'll talk about that later. Julie then comes back to the play gym, picks up her two oldest kids and takes all three of her kids to her sister's house. Julie Harper's sister, Amy. Amy says she didn't have a strong relationship with Julie, but that the two were starting to get close again. On the day that Jason was killed, Amy says that Julie asked to bring the kids over to visit, but then left shortly after, not returning for more than eight hours. Pretty much immediately said that she needed to leave and run an errand. Did she say anything else to you at that time? No. What was her demeanor like at that time? Uh, frazzled a little. Was she crying? No. Did she ask you for help other than just that you had the kids? No. From there, Julie leaves her sister's house and she goes to her father's office, his real estate office. Julie Harper's day on the run. She showed up at her father's real estate office. Shock. I shot, basically I shot Jason in self-defense, or I shot Jason to defend myself. John Syak says he didn't ask many questions, but did call attorney Paul Finks. Hours later, Syak and Harper met up with the attorney. They then picked up Harper's two children from a relative's home. Amy also says that her father came to the house before Julie returned to pick up the children, and the two of them wouldn't tell her exactly what had happened. Basically, Julie then spends the rest of the day with her father. They explain to the lawyer the situation and the lawyer ends up calling the police, asking them to do a welfare check on Jason. He's like, my client shot him in self-defense. Please go check. And this doesn't happen until 11 p.m. The police show up. He's been shot in the morning. It's been over 12 hours. They show up and they find Jason dead under a pile of tons of clothes. They immediately rule it a homicide and the medical examiner rules that the cause of death was a single bullet that pierced his heart. The bullet also entered him from the back. The police then go to Julie's dad's house. Now, Julie and her father are inside the house at this time. In the morning, police knocked on their door, but they didn't answer. Doorbell rang. Somebody said, please. Carlsbad, please. Something like that. What happened then? Nothing. We've been instructed by Mr. Finks to let him handle the situation. Julie's attorney then advises her to turn herself in. Well, she does this, and while she's being booked, her whole self-defense story starts to unravel a little bit. They ask her to undress, they take pictures of her. There is no evidence of any type of physical harm to Julie on her body. And this is when they start to suspect that the story she's telling is not the truth. The poor kids end up getting taken and put into foster care, protective custody at the time. And then later on they go with family, but at this point they are in protective custody, their mom is in jail and their dad is dead. The other thing cops couldn't find were Julie's two guns. She had two guns registered in her name and they were nowhere to be found. They did however find 52 bottles of prescription pills in the master bedroom, including Oxycontin, oxycodone, hydrocodone. Her attorney said that these medications were needed 
for his client's arthritis. While the cops were at Julie's dad's house, they found a bag and this bag would end up being a point of contention in the trial. There were actually two trials and this was the getaway bag. Well, her father given immunity to testify and this is what he revealed, a bag similar to this one holding some surprising contents. Inside, nearly $40,000 in cash and much more. From cash to pills to jewelry, even naked pictures of a man. Surveillance shots of her withdrawing large amounts of money from the bank just before she shot him dead. As I recall, what was in the backpack was currency, jewelry, maybe credit cards, traveler's checks, and a gun. Did it have passports in it? Oh yes, passports. So the gun that was found in the getaway bag was not the gun that was used to shoot Jason. This was the other gun that Julie had. I had a bit of a brain fart, that's why there was a weird delay there. So the interesting thing here is that people are interpreting the getaway bag in two different ways. Did the light just change? I think I'm tripping. Some people are like, well, this kind of means that maybe she was afraid for her life and she was planning to escape like a messed up situation. Maybe it was self-defense. And then other people are like, mm, maybe this was premeditated and she was going to do this and go on the run. And this is all part of her plan. And it wasn't like this last minute self-defense thing. Which brings us back to this main issue, right? Was this self-defense or was it not? To answer this question, we need to go back. Back to the beginning of Julie and Jason's relationship. Julie and Jason met in Hermosa Beach in the year 2000. And from the beginning, the relationship was kind of rocky. And according to Julie, it was very clear that they were two polar opposites. Quote, for the first couple of months, it was fun. I liked him, had a good time. About three, four months into it, I had become very concerned that we had different values for many things in life. You see, Julie was a straight A student. She then got accepted into Harvard. And then from there, she became a very successful real estate agent. Whereas according to Julie, Jason was a surfer dude who she described as lazy. Not only did they have different philosophies on success and career and life, but also religion. According to Julie, he didn't go to church. He never spoke of faith in his life, but it was more than that. He was critical of organized religion in general, almost to the point of making fun of me for practicing. Their relationship was rocky and they actually broke up a few months into the relationship. But then they decided to get back together and then six months later they got engaged. And this is when Jason got controlling, according to Julie, quote, Julie testified that Jason tried to change her in several ways, including the way she dressed. She said he often made fun of her preppy polo shirts, calling her a geek or nerd, and instead brought her surf style clothing to wear, including spaghetti strap tank tops that bared her midriff. After they were married, Julie testified that Jason would often get angry and lose his temper over, quote, everyday things, end quote. The yelling had gotten so frequent, I put up a calendar and put X's where there was yelling, she said, adding that his behavior seemed abnormal. Julie also mentioned that he was mean to the kids. She said, even after feeding, he would continue screaming. Jason always wanted me to put him back in the crib. He would get very angry when I went to pick him up, she said. So the couple's arguing pretty much daily. They argued about her weight gain after going on to steroids for arthritis pain. He would call her lazy and fat and the arthritis medication that she was taking. He said that she was faking her arthritis. And then there was the really bad argument that happened right before their 10th anniversary. The defense played this tape of an argument the night before their 10th anniversary. About her 10th anniversary. I thought he said her marriage sucked that. I want a divorce if it wasn't for our kids. So it's 2010 now and things are about to get worse. Julie says that this is the first time that Jason R worded her. It rhymes with cape, you know, fill in the blanks. Julie Harper told of being by her husband five or six times that year, 2010. Julie said that he would do this to her over 30 times. According to Julie, the first time it happened was because 
Jason became enraged when she mentioned cutting back from work and that how this would affect the finances in the relationship because Julie was a successful real estate agent. She made a hundred thousand a year. Whereas Jason, he made like 36,000 a year being a high school teacher and volleyball coach. And her arthritis had gotten to the point where she felt she wanted to be a stay at home mom. She couldn't keep up with her work schedule. And she says that this upset Jason to the point where he R worded her. I don't care, but don't force me into going somewhere until you give me like $3,000. Slamming me up against the wall, um, forcibly entering me from behind. I said, stop, stop. What are you doing? Stop. And she said that when he finished, he dropped her like a wet rag and hopped in the shower. Live in Vista, Steve Fury in attendance. Finances was one of the biggest issues in their relationship. They always fought about money. Once Julie became a stay-at-home mom, Jason felt like she was spending frivolous, frivolously, sorry, and he was very mad about it, yelling and screaming, and she recorded him doing so. Putting our kid in the daycare making me pay for it. And you want to claim that you're taking care of him? F you. Exactly. Go tell that to the counselor and she'll go, yeah, that's pretty much what you are. <laughs> I don't want to enable your horrible money ways and your poor credit score and everything else. I don't want to enable that. Regarding Julie's arthritis, remember she was taking a lot of medication and she was taking steroids and she felt like that was making her overweight and he was upset with her for being overweight and telling her she was faking. But the people around, like neighbors and people who knew Julie, said that they believed she was becoming addicted to the pills. She was sleeping a lot, she was always tired, and she seemed out of it sometimes. As a result of this, Julie kind of became a recluse and she started hoarding, and that's why you see the place looking the way it was. That's kind of where her head was at. Um, and she says that's why five days before she shot Jason, she filed for a divorce. As a matter of fact, Julie says that the day she shot him, she told him, I'm filing for a divorce. Quote, in the divorce documents filed just August 2nd, allegations were made that Jason Harper was occasionally violent towards his wife. Defense attorney Paul Flinkst described at least one previous interaction with police in November 2011 when Julie Harper called the Carlsbad police for assistance and the police responded to the home. Jason Harper was directed by the police to leave the home for a time and then come back later, according to Finkst. So that's interesting. Maybe Julie's telling the truth? Maybe. Julie says she tells him that that morning and he gets upset. He flies into a rage. He threatens to kill her. And that's when she shoots. Now she claims that she doesn't know what happened. It was an accident. She was afraid. She grabbed the gun because he was threatening her, but the actual shooting she says was an accident and she doesn't even know what just happened. He'd just been in an absolute fury in a fit, screaming, and I grabbed my gun from under my pillow. I turned around, I told him, stop. Did you stop? No, I said, stay back. He was coming towards me with his arms raised, and he said, I'm gonna kill you, you I was holding onto my gun tightly. I didn't know, I thought he was gonna. Felt my hand jerk and heard a loud noise. And he was still like coming forward at me. And then all of a sudden, he froze. So Julie actually had two trials. In the first trial, she was facing multiple charges. They had her on first degree murder, second degree murder, and some lesser gun charges. And in that trial, she was acquitted of first degree. We the jury in the above entitled cause find the defendant, Julie Harper, not guilty. There's a juror, juror number three from her first trial who spoke to media about why he believed her. We tracked down juror number three. I believe that Julie was again bodily 
threatened with harm. He says this video is proof. And in her case, spousal. And I think she was not going to take it for the 31st time and she took him out. The video footage of Jason yelling and screaming. I don't care, but don't force me into going somewhere until you give me like $3,000. So a lot of people believe this was kind of the nail in the coffin for Jason and that that's why Julie was acquitted, especially holding the baby and screaming with the baby in his hand. It didn't look good, but the jury was hung on the second degree. So there was a mistrial and then that led to her second trial, but something happens that throws a wrench in the prosecution's plans. And that something is Julie is now pregnant. She stunned everyone when she showed up visibly pregnant. The result, she says, of in vitro fertilization. In court motions, her attorneys have asked the trial be delayed, arguing it's a high-risk pregnancy requiring a C-section and eight weeks to recover. Carlsbad woman charged with killing her teacher husband is celebrating a legal victory. Julie Harper's retrial is being postponed because she's pregnant. Prosecutors say she was pregnant when the trial date was set and she is now manipulating the system. And I know the defendant in the meantime is in no hurry to bring this case to trial because she's out of custody living in the home where this happened and enjoying her freedom. If Harper used sperm from her husband, prosecutors say it could hurt her claims that she was scared of him. During her trial, she read a postcard she'd written to an old boyfriend, calling him the love of her life. Prosecutors also claim that Julie Harper has been dating another man since killing her husband. Could that new boyfriend really be the baby's father? The father of the child is Harper's ex-boyfriend. It could reveal her true motives. The defense team says the ex-boyfriend is not the father. So there was this whole scandal of like, oh my God, who's the daddy? Who's the daddy? All the media was asking, who's the daddy? So who's the father? The mystery over the identity of the father could impact this trial. They also want to know who the father is. Shocking pregnancy raises questions about who the father is. Who is the baby's father? She said it's not Jason. She wouldn't say who. Julie is not telling anyone who the daddy is. She'll mention it later, but at this point, it's still this big mystery. Finally, she gives birth, and now it's time for the retrial, and this one was scandalous. Julie took the stand again. She took the stand both times. She said, quote, My husband was a different man behind closed doors. I'm still recovering from everything he did to me all those years. He just came to a whole new level of enraged. He pushed me against the wall in our bedroom, chest um, to the wall, face, cheek to the wall, was pressing me with his body against the wall and began yanking my bottoms down with one of his hands, screaming, spitting on me. Um. So the prosecution then asks her, well, did you tell anyone about this, your friends, your family? like?" How come no one's really heard of this before? And she says that she was basically embarrassed. Have you ever called the police on Jason for any of these incidents? No, I was very embarrassed. I didn't want my family to know. I didn't want my neighbors to know. But she did write about it in her diary. And she says she documented everything in her diary. Sex, 11 p.m fight 10 to 12 hours. Julie said that in this diary there was code, that the word sex was actually code for the R word. They were like, well, if you're using that for code, how do we know when you're talking about the normal thing, like regular sex versus R word? And she said, quote, I wasn't generally writing down when it was regular sex. I wasn't keeping track of consensual sex. It's pretty obvious that this isn't pleasant sex that's going on. Then there were passages in her diary where she's talking about wanting more sex, more foreplay, more variety, longer time, and that she wishes he was like essentially better in bed. And the prosecution is like, well, you know, how is it that he's doing this to you if you're wanting more and she's basically like, you know, essentially, yeah, I did write that. Both things can be true. So if I'm understanding your testimony correctly, this were going on at this time, but you're having a conversation with him about interest in sex in your marriage. Is that correct? 
Yes. In terms of the events that led up to the shooting, she basically said the same thing. I knew that he was going to shoot me. As he was coming toward me, he said, I'm going to kill you, you I heard a loud noise and felt my hand jerk. What had happened? My gun had gone off. I began creeping my way out of the bathroom because um, I was still just afraid that he was playing possum and was gonna jump up. Remember the getaway bag? Yeah, this time they brought her father in and they asked him about the contents of the bag. And the thing is, her father had a really bad memory. Throughout the testimony, as I mentioned, Julie's father noted he did not remember many details. I don't know if this is selective memory or he really does have a bad memory, but it got to the point where the defense attorney pulled him aside. Julie's father, though, continuously telling prosecutors that he didn't remember or recall certain information. So much so, in fact, that Harper's attorney apparently pulled him aside during the break and talked to him about his memory. This is important to note that he did get immunity. Her dad got immunity for testifying. So he wouldn't get in trouble, but perhaps was he protecting his daughter? He seemed very protective in the beginning, all the things he did. I don't know. Then you have a parade of people testifying. Neighbors testified. He was often with his kids. He was very friendly. He was kind. A recording of an argument that Harper's had, an argument secretly recorded by Julie Harper. In it, Jason Harper swears at his wife. Marriage is hard. It's not easy. There's times when there's conflict. It's not ideal, but there's times when words are exchanged. I've experienced it myself. We carpooled with one another. And in that time, I noticed a change in Julie Harper. And I noticed that she was really out of it. And uh, I didn't allow carpooling with my daughter any longer. And then it was time for the kids to testify. And it was awful, bad, horrible, depressing. How are you doing today, Jake? Not good. Why not good? <laughs> Because I really don't want to be here. How come you don't want to be here? Because I want to be in school. And Julie told us that he was dead. When he fell off his chair, he got dead, I think. How do you feel about your mom now? I don't like her. Why not? Because she killed my father. And she refuses to call her mom mom. She calls her Julie because she doesn't feel like that's her mother anymore. Then you had some experts come in. It is a cream colored pouch, zipper pouch. It has two cell phones and two batteries. A computer specialist went over all the activity on the Harper's home computer. It is a log of um, internet um, sites that were looked at at that time, that day. At around 836 on the morning of Jason Harper's death, before viewing a pay stub, that person went to the California Teacher Association's website, viewing the legal as well as the benefits and insur insurance sections. Jason was a Carlsbad High School teacher. Also today, a field evidence technician testified it was difficult to locate the body in the master bedroom, hidden under blankets and other items in a bedroom cluttered with boxes, water bottles, computer equipment, and even more. The prosecutor said Julie Harper was a hoarder who lived in a chaotic mess. And then we heard from Jason's family. I said, are you safe? Something just didn't feel right. I screamed and said, it's so final. I passed one of those CSI looking trucks. And that's what I was pretty sure that Julie had killed my brother. Julie Harper has showed little emotion throughout this retrial. What really what put the nail in the coffin for Julie was when they debunked her accident theory that she pulled the trigger on accident. The prosecution asked the judge if they could actually bring the same type of gun she had, a Derringer uh, 38 Special, I think, and have the jury pull, you know, they, it's a dry gun, meaning there's no bullets in it, not like the one Alec Baldwin had. Jurors got to hold a gun and pull the trigger inside a Vista courtroom today. Jared, why did prosecutors who, of course, are trying to convict Harper put a gun in the jury's hands? Virginia, they're trying to show to the jury that pulling the trigger of that gun is no accident. And they wanted the jury to feel just how much force it needs. 
That's the sound of the trigger clicking. It's very unlikely for that to be an accidental pulling of the trigger. And then it was time for the jury to deliberate and it only took them one day. We've got breaking news. The verdict has just been read in the Julie Harper retrial. The verdict comes after only one day of deliberations. Julie sits anxiously in court at her retrial as a second jury is about to deliver its verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Julie Harper, guilty of the crime of murder. Julie wiped away tears when the jury returned with its guilty verdict. Julie was put in handcuffs. You see her mouth the words, I love you, to her father. The day after Julie was found guilty, she did some jailhouse interviews. One day after a jury convicted Julie Harper of murder, she agreed to speak with us in a jailhouse interview. I'm really sick. Unfortunately, he's free. It felt like the district attorney, Keith Watanabe, had blatantly lied throughout the case. Why did you become pregnant knowing that you may go to jail for 40 years? Um, well, I think there's, there's actually, there's a couple of reasons for that. A big part of it has to do with what happened with my other children and what went on there. Dematic separation by um, law enforcement and the district attorney's she sits in a cell here at Las Colinas. Julie Harper behind bars. She's the mom recently convicted of murdering her husband. This horrible, unfortunate incident unfolded and I had to defend myself. Her baby daughter is being raised by her parents. I miss my daughter so much. I am innocent of any criminal wrongdoing. Jailhouse Julie. We're about to interview California convict Julie Harper. Hi, Julie. How you doing? Well, I've been better, obviously. Why didn't you call 911? Well, um, unfortunately, my husband passed incredibly quickly. I also just didn't want them to have to, you know, visually see anything. I didn't want them to have those kind of um, nightmares or visions in their head for, for the rest of their life. Where's the gun right now, Julie? I don't know, unfortunately. What Nobby claimed during the trial, Julie had planned to murder her husband, perhaps to be with another man she'd been seen with after her husband's shooting. That's completely false. I, um, I have many good friends. The person that they were referring to was someone that is a very dear, close friend of mine, but I was completely faithful to my husband during our entire marriage. Who is the father of that child? It's an anonymous donor. And with that, Julie Harper gives a wave. God bless you and our interview ends. And there she is right now, off back to her cell. And then it was time for Julie's sentencing and she blessed the court with a 40 minute rambling speech. Before the sentencing, Harper spent nearly 40 minutes in a rambling speech. Her speech, which went on for more than 30 minutes. She was talking about all sorts of different topics, rambling on, and it got so bad that the judge had to redirect her back to this case. But he was a very different man to me. And it's been so hard to go through all of this for the last three and a half plus years. And that broke my heart. The physical pain that I went through has healed, but the emotional pain stays. After what I went through with him for years and years. And Julie Harper is a selfish, arrogant, and vile person. She threw away her children and made them orphans. Then the DA read a statement from Harper's oldest daughter. Because you killed our dad, you are no longer mom. You are Julie. I will never call you mom again. Well, three jurors came out today to watch Julie Harper get sentenced, and afterwards they basically came this close to calling her a sociopath. We thought she was a liar. We thought she was manipulative. I think she's a horrible woman, and she's a liar. Harper issued this plea to her children. Mommy wants to apologize to you guys for everything you've been through. The judge was not moved. You are sentenced to 40 years to life. So she is currently incarcerated at the California Institution for Women in Chino in Riverside County, California, and she will be eligible for parole in 20. 
39. So those are the facts. Now let's discuss the theories. So basically there are two theories. There might be like a hybrid theory. The first theory is that she's innocent. And so if she's innocent and it is self-defense, the things that lead to that are in her divorce documents, they mentioned that the police were called and Jason was told to leave the house. And so maybe there was something going on. Then there are the videos of him yelling and screaming, while holding the baby, which I don't know, makes him seem a little bit unhinged. Then there's the getaway bag, which could go either way. Like, was she really at her wit's end and planning to leave and then slipped up and told him, I'm divorcing you, I'm leaving. And he snapped and she had to do it. There are no things on her body though that show that she was being physically harmed. Which brings me to the other theory, which is that this wasn't self-defense. And the thing that lets me believe that maybe it was a premeditated thing was the Google searches. She's searching for benefits. Benefits that you would only get when your husband dies. Why is she searching for benefits if she's planning on leaving and fleeing and never seeing him again? The fact that her children like hate her. Uh, then there's the whole thing with the gun, right? How it can't be an accident. Why is she saying it's an accident? Is it self-defense? Is it an accident? It seemed like she's trying to cover all her bases. I don't know. You have the fact that the bullet was in his back and there are no signs of a struggle. So was he simply caught unaware? That's what many jurors believe. I believe that it wasn't like self-defense, like in the moment she was gonna die and she had to do it. But I do believe their relationship was probably really toxic. Maybe he was saying things to her that are absolutely awful. Maybe he was gaslighting her about her illness. Does that mean she should kill him? No, just leave him. Um, did she kill him in the hopes of getting those benefits? But then why'd she file for divorce? Maybe she didn't think it through and it just all kind of happened that morning. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. There's so many different things. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. And almost forgot, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate that. All right, see you guys, bye.